I think with that, because we are going to get into player profiling in great detail in a future video, uh, we'll leave it at that and just show you now what the color configuration is for for these stats. How to set that up? Okay, guys. So this is the player preferences section of Hold the Manager. And this is the default configuration that I have, and that's exactly what I just showed you guys in those um, previous two hands uh, in the replayer. And this is the default for my big stack strategy play. Again, we just covered all those um, top line hands, right? You fold to a steal in the big blind, in the small blind, VPIP, PFR, and steal, late position, open raises, and from the small blind. And here you've got a new panel, that's the one, that's the second line underneath. Yeah, the player's information, and then here the final line is in, of course, just as we went through. The color coding is, um, you know, red when it's uh, less than 15%, uh, meaning that you can't steal against that guy very often. Anytime he's less than 75, I'm yellow, and anytime he's over uh, 75%, I've got a green tag. That means you can start stealing with more or less any two against this guy. Same here with the small blind uh, V-pip. Anytime a guy's playing less than 9% of all hands, he's dangerous when he, when he does play. Um, PFR, same deal. If he's only raising 8% uh, or less in any given position, you know, heads up, that's going to be difficult. Anytime he's over 16%, you can very often re-raise and um, get creative against a guy depending on how, how aggressive he is post-flop. Uh, steals again, same deal. If the guy's stealing less than 15%, you know, it's, uh, it's a much, much stronger hand than the guy that we just... Uh, we just saw with a 37% steal uh, stat. Hands, of course, clear. Um, aggression factor. Um, anytime a guy is, yeah, less than 1.5, you know, I'm not worried about him playing back at me so much. Um, anytime aggression factor start getting into two and three, he's getting more aggressive. Uh, you need to take that definitely into consideration. And anytime he's over three, um, expect to fight. <laughs> okay. Uh, flop C bet, we have that already. Um, if he's less than 15%, I'm not going to be expecting a C bet from that guy. Um, he's red if he's C betting as much as we do, for example. Uh, folding to a flop C bet, it's now the other way around, as you see here, right? Um, because when you're betting into him, when you're making a C bet, um, you want him to be folding quite a lot. If he's only folding 15% or less, your C bet percentages, when you are making a C bet bluff, yeah, yeah, you just have to be a lot more careful with that, right? Um, you're not going to be getting away with a lot of c bet, uh, c bet bluffs against this guy if he's only if he's only folding at 15% or less. Went to showdown again. Anybody that's over 29% um, means that you're not going to be, yeah, not necessarily in any given circumstance, but they're going to be more difficult to push off the hands, right? The green if they're getting to the showdown less than 18%. Uh, at least I've set it up this way. You know, you can you can play with these numbers and alter them as you see fit. But I think that's, you know, given optimal statistical play, I think this is a pretty good setup. Here, are the flop versus the turn bet, um, same setup. One at the showdown. Um, yeah, as follows here. Good. So this is basically my setup for. It's a default setup, and that's what I use for uh, when I'm playing big stack strategy. I've also got a setup for no limit uh, shorthanded which looks like this. It's exactly the same setup with different um, stats, right? Because you're going to be playing a wider range when you're playing six max or when you're playing shorthanded uh, than you will be playing full ring. Right? And the steals, the steel set's more or less the same. I mean, you got market differences here in VPIP uh, and PFR. Aggression factor, uh, more or less the same. Yeah, the rest is more or less the same, but the, these two numbers definitely uh, need to be adjusted for your um, six max and shorthanded play. We also have one just for if you're playing a very typical um, short stack strategy. You don't have this final um, this final panel here, kind of describing what you know what your players are are doing post flop on the the flop turn and river. Because with the short stack strategy, I mean more often than not, you're getting it in either pre flop or on the flop or you're getting out of the hand. So, you know, this is a very condensed, very um, simplified version for this short stack strategy as such. That's um, also been covered in uh, different videos on cash game play and just as a 
yeah, quick info on that. It's you know when you buy in for the table minimum, which used to be 20 big blinds. Uh, now in most playing conditions on most um, most sites and most online casinos, you the minimum is something like 35 or 40, which means that you have to you know adjust your short stack strategy play. And for that, we've created then a certain hybrid strategy which combines both principles of the short stack strategy and the big stack strategy so that you can still buy in for the minimum and kind of incorporate those two strategies together. Again, covered in a different video. Last one we have here is heads up. And heads up plays, of course, if you're playing in a cash game heads up, uh, just its own animal. I mean, it's completely, completely different. You're basically, uh, yeah, actually in the next video we'll be looking at uh, the stats on that, but for all intents and purposes, when you're playing heads up, you're playing an extreme lag, um, extreme lag style. Uh, small blind V pip here, small blind PFR, and you're seeing here. I mean, look at the differences, right? Uh, he's green if he's if he's playing less than 30% of all hands. He's only going red if he's over 80%, right? So that just shows you what the difference is. I mean, heads up, you you got to have a lot of gamble in you. Um, and you should be playing at these at these ranges as well. If you're not, you don't properly understand the game here. Anyways, that's again topic for another video. Uh, small blind PFR. If he's raising less than 30%, he's red, but only then. <laughs> raising 30% in a full ring game is of course ridiculous. Yeah, but in I'm sorry, in this uh, heads up scenario here, you know, anytime he's he's raising less than 30%, that's only that's only when he's going red. Uh, that means that he's raising too little in a heads-up scenario. Right. And this is, yeah, again, covered in different videos, but just to give you an idea of the differences in the color coding based on the game type. In your own configuration, you definitely should adjust these numbers in these color coding um, scenarios. Uh, heads-up, limp fold, limp call, limp re-raise. Um, the bottom two lines here when I'm playing heads-up, I've got um, what the player is doing in the big blind, how he's reacting um, to steals, calls, da 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 and then the last two are just the same as our default, more or less. And again, just to follow up on that, you see here, this is a full ring game, and you see the different uh, color coding here. So this guy's green because he's not that aggressive. Uh, he's yellow here because you're going to catch a C-bet two times in three. Yeah, uh, He's red here because he's getting to the showdown 60%. That means that you're not going to be able to push him off of hands, and so on. Uh, the guys here, for example, the rocks. <laughs> Actually, let's pull out our or super rock here. This guy here, I mean, 98% fold to a big blind. You know, it's green all day because you can basically steal raise any two against this guy. Yeah, uh, he's red here because he's only playing 9% and 5% PFR, right? And also red here on the steal level uh, because if this guy is stealing, you know, it's going red because you, you know, you should have a heads up. Hey, unless you got a really good hand, you need to get out of the way. He's green here on the hands because that's a really good sample size. 1.5 again, you know, not so not so aggressive. So he's green here as well. Uh, yellow on C bets, yellow on fold to C bets, yellow on went to showdown, and yeah, 75% um, is then green fold to river bets um, with an N of 12. It also speaks for triple barrels potentially given certain circumstances. Um, and bluffs potentially on the river. Just very briefly, how you can then implement this when using the calculators we've created for you guys and or compiled. These ranges, you know, the way this the way this all comes together is that you use these stats. For example, if you saw that guy who's uh, that rock guy who's just pre-flop raising five percent, this is your equity against that guy with different holdings. You know, if he's only raising. 5%, we put him on nines, a better ace queen, and more than likely something like this. Very often, it'll be the case that he's raising this. If you see his 3 bet and 4 bet stats, it probably looks like this. You know, essentially what you're doing here is just taking that information from your statistic and inferring what his actual hand range is based on that percentage. So 3% of all hands, the top 3% is Jack's a better ace king. And that you get again from Poker Stove, and yeah, this is then the matchup. Let's say you got tens. This guy makes his standard uh, open raise from middle position at five percent. You've only got forty-four percent against that entire range. And in any given scenario, I mean, you could be able to re-raise and, and push him. Yeah, push him off from time to time. 
but I mean just with against such a rock you gotta be really 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 careful with these kind of hands yeah? now let's say you know this guy raises and you've got aces you got now 84 percent equity against his entire range in that position uh, here with aces I mean you can you can definitely argue as always for a re-raise and know that this guy will very often play back at you right he'll very often at least call uh, check out the flop so you know when the 37 percent guy comes raising at you um, and you got your aces I mean you can in certain circumstances you know argue for even cold calling getting tricky um, maybe smaller three bets because you, you know you want to keep that guy involved uh, here you can go maybe a bit higher just as an idea just kind of throw out a few ideas for you guys um, because of the likelihood that he plays back or calls is going to be quite high uh, just given this really tight range that would be then taking that statistical information implementing it here into the calculators to kind of give you an estimated range of your opponent and then how your equity uh, works out based on your holding versus that entire range uh, they, these numbers and come over here when you're in your push calculator um, for you know your assumed equity and your assumed fold equity right the fold equity is going to be of course much higher when you raise a guy with a 37 percent v pip than when you raise a guy here who's who's only playing five or eight percent of all hand again very brief overview how you can implement that into your your general play and how you can implement that also in the calculators that we have for you so that was about all I wanted to cover in that video, online statistics and especially um, Hold'em Manager, which I can only recommend for everybody playing online. Um, if you're not playing with a statistics program online, you are essentially playing blind. It would be the equivalent of playing live with a blindfold where you have no tells and no idea of, of the players and you, yeah, you're basically playing slots. So, uh, not yeah, okay. It's not that extreme, but um, without the statistical knowledge, you're just at such an enormous uh, disadvantage against most players that it would be close to impossible to post a profit in the long run without it. Um, unless, of course, you're at sites such as Cake, where no one is allowed to use uh, such programs, and uh, then yeah, you better get really active with taking notes, right? Um, yeah, because that, at that point, that's going to be your tell. It's basically your note-taking. Again, yeah, very brief overview of the statistics, especially from Hold'em Manager, and how you can implement those in the calculators. And in our final video here in the series on Poker Math, we'll look at the optimal stats, as, um, as described from various strategy websites, and my own personal experience, uh, Hold'em Manager as such. And yeah, we'll just briefly touch on the starting hands charts because those for no limit and fixed limit hold'em will be covered in great detail in the theoretical videos on cash games. Again, this is Dylan, and as always, do feel free to contact me at any time if you have any questions pertaining to the topics we've covered in this or any of the previous videos. Till next time.